Born into royalty, our guest today has shown that even a prince must make his own path. Like his father, he chose the medical profession, becoming a doctor at a very young age. He didn't stop there. He chose to make impact by making policies that would change the lives of all Nigerians for better. You will meet our guest after this break. This is the Sunday interview. I'm Jokeli Jadu. We'll be right back. every day that you get to host two generations of a family on the program so today I'm pretty excited our guest today is the son of a prominent southwestern king is also a seventh senator of the Federal Republic he is Senator Larry Ted Joshua you're welcome to the program Senator good morning so let's start like this who is Senator Larry Ted Joshua well Senator Larry Ted Joshua is a medical practitioner uh, is a grandfather and father uh, of many children that are successful, mm -hmm. that are graduates already, and married to a beautiful wife, Princess Mujisola Tedrusha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, what was growing up like as a prince? What, what was Growing up, like, how did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Well, I had all my education in Nigeria. Um, despite the fact that I had the option of studying abroad, I had uh, a very supportive family. My grandmother, my father, my mother, and. Um, I never went to anybody's house. I was with them throughout. Started in the University of Lagos Staff School and um, proceeded to Igbobi College and then University of Lagos uh, Teaching Hospital to study medicine. So you can almost call yourself a Lagos boy. I'm made in Nigeria. <laughs> Okay, growing up, who were some of your earliest influences? People that you would say that, you know, influenced the man that you are now? Well, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be like my father because um, he's a medical practitioner and that informed my study in medicine. I, when I finished from Igobi College, I had very good grades. I could be I could have attempted to be an accountant, mm -hmm. an engineer, whatever profession I wanted when I finished my secondary school, I could have gone into because I was qualified for everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I went into medicine because of my father. I know that aside being a seventh senator, you are also a businessman, medical doctor, all in one. Away from all these things you do, how do you relax? Well, funny enough, I would say my best relaxation in is when I'm having a long haul mm. travel. Mm. When I'm traveling to China, for example, I have about nine, ten hours of no phone call disturbing me. I can sleep with no disturbance of any phone call. And I really enjoy myself when I travel, mm. when I'm on the plane. Mm. Do you enjoy any form of sports? Do you play any kind of sports? Well, I am a good tennis player. Okay. But I uh, would admit that in the last few early years, I have not been chance to keep that up. Mm. As a medical doctor, we advise our patients to make exercise mm. a very part important of part of their yeah. life. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to make sure we practice what we preach. <laughs> practice what you preach. 
Okay, so music. Do you enjoy music? Yes, of course. I in Nigeria, I my favorite is uh, the foremost indigenous of my state, my senatorial district, mm. Commander Ebenezer Obi. Obi, yeah. And then I love anything that uh, talks about Jesus. Mm. Gospel artist, mm, mm, mm. nice praise worship. Mm. You became a medical doctor at a very young age. I, I know that you know. If we had to look at your generation, then you probably would have been the youngest. How were you able to achieve that feat? Well, I think I, I stand to be corrected. I was the youngest ever at that time to have graduated from uh, University of Lagos Teaching Hospital as a medical practitioner. And um, I had most of my friends, not in the teaching hospital, I had my friends in Akoka, mm. doing other courses, courses like engineer yeah. mm. and um, accountancy and so on, mass communication. So I was living virtually in Akoka and studying in, uh, in, in uh, Diaraba. Yeah, in Diaraba, yeah. So it was a tough one, but it was tough for me because I wanted to satisfy both parts. But I thank God that um, I came out successfully. Mm. So would you describe yourself as um, a romantic man by any chance? Well, I believe you need to book an appointment <laughs> with your wife. With my wife <laughs> to ask that question. But I'm sure she must have told you once or twice if you were. Well, all I can tell you is for someone to have been married for 30 years mm. Mm. to the same woman. Mm. So you don't need to ask there, for that question. Yeah, there has to be some some. You just had our 30 years anniversary last week. Wow! Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations. So, there's there's the common saying about Nigerian men. They say if a Nigerian man doesn't smoke, he will drink. If he doesn't drink, he will womanize. Which of the three do you do? Oh. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> First of all, I don't smoke. That one, I thank God, I've never smoked in my life. The drink, I take communion in the church. Okay. So communion wine. <laughs> okay. So if that is the that case. That could pass for drinking. Oh, so. Mm. And womanizing, I have my wife, I have my daughter. Mm. And uh, there are the women in my life. Mm, mm, mm. So what inspired your move into politics? Wh wh where did that, oh yes, I really want to do something for my people. Where did it come from? Well, you can say maybe about uh, this same 12, 15 years ago, I decided to, I was in the private sector fully, and I wanted to develop a railway from Lagos to Ibadan, mm. about 15 years ago. And uh, President Obasanjo was the president, president at that time, at the, the first time. time. Yeah. Mm. And I got all the funding from America. Nigeria was putting about just 5%. I did all the paperwork, I arranged everything, spent all the money privately as a private citizen. Mm. Everything was signed. I was to do it with the Odua group mm. at that time. But after so many uh, meetings and even we had an interview like this when we were signing the BMO, mm. it was on television everywhere mm. in the southwest. Mm. But suddenly, because of government bureaucracy, it died. Wow. So I was so frustrated. Wow. So I said, instead of me complaining, you have uh, to be. Let yeah, me just yeah. maybe get involved. I should get involved mm. and get things moving and be part of the government, mm. so that such laudable projects. When I want, to, when I'm in government, when I see such bureaucracy, you would, you I will be able yeah, to intervene. Exactly, exactly. And I thank God today we are having that legacy by now, especially mm, mm. because of that. My priority, apart from health, I my first request, of course, health. Yes, as my profession, mm. I wanted to be in transport. Mm. So mm. today I'm in transport committee because of my experience 15 years ago mm. that I brought this. I went to even approach most of the churches on the road. Mm to invest so that we can have stations in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sections so that yeah. it's you know. so it was a tough one, but I believe it was an experience uh, worth my while. All right, so ten years on since you you know actively got into politics, 
what 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 would you say the experience has been like? Well, I would say um, it's always good to be a spectator. Mm. After being a spectator in a football match, try to be a player. Mm. Because mm. when you're a spectator, you complain so much about the football player mm. when mm. he makes mistakes mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. When you are watching as a spectator, exactly, you can, you can, you can you spot keep all the flaws. Yeah. Yes, okay. If I were there, I Aha, would do it differently. Yes. Yeah. So being there now, Is I now different? see what the players go through. Mm. That you know, it's not everything that you will do the way the spectator will want you to do it. Mm. Because in that particular field, that playing field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are so many other networks, mm. so many other interrelated mm. issues that you must put into consideration. Mm. Mm. So there are so many things in government too that the electorate, the masses, yeah, they expect you must do this yeah. to, you know, that's what they you should do. Of. But we know if you do it, it will cause more damage mm. than good, but they don't know. Mm. So that's why it's not good to, to, to blame quickly. Mm. Do you miss the practice of medicine? I mean, you know, seeing day-to-day -day patients and all that. Do, do you miss it at all? Well, I, 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 I want to retire into it in my older age. Okay. And um, it's always good to solve people's problems. Mm. Because next to God, we are, we are doctors. Mm. Mm. Mm? Mm. God is doctors for people. Mm, mm, mm. And when you are sick, you can do anything to heal yourself. Mm. So I believe after God, doctors. Mm, mm. So it's a good feeling to see people's lives changed mm. after you administer your service to them. Mm. All right, we're going on a short break now. When we come back, we'll still be speaking with Senator Larry Tejosho. Stay with us. <laughs> 